Hi everyone, this is Dr. Karna Kumar speaking, consultant hematologist and bone marrow transplant physician. So today I am going to discuss on a very important topic with you all. Uh, it's called ITP or immune thrombocytopenia. So I am going to address very important aspects of uh, the disease. You know, many patients are worried about this disease. Most often they are emotional, uh, they struggle emotionally and uh, most of them are anxious about their platelet count. And uh, so commonly most of them, it's very difficult to get answers for many questions which uh, arise in their mind. So today I am going to address all these uh, important questions which are faced by patient in their day to day life. So coming to the first question. So doctor, what is this ITP? So what, why the platelet drops in this uh, disease? So ITP, uh, earlier uh, we used to call it as idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura. So what does it mean? So idiopathic being cause unknown. So we don't know why the platelets drop actually. And uh, thrombocytopenia meaning low platelet count. And the term purpura means red spots on the skin. So whenever the red spots happen, oh, those are called purpura and uh, uh, echemotic patches. So because the these three reasons, so it's named as idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura but lot of research you know lot of evidence so recently the name has been changed to immune thrombocytopenia so why so because no more it's idiopathic so we know the cause now so what is the cause here it's the immune system which is the so main problem here so normally our immune system so it always defends us it protects us from all the microbes and bacteria so but in uh, itp or immune thrombocytopenia so the immune system somehow gets confused and uh, thinks platelet as foreign objects or a, like a bacteria, it considers it as a bacteria. So then it starts attacking the platelets. So it produces a lot of antibodies which go and bind the platelet and they carry it to the spleen and then spleen uh, kills the platelets. So in ITP, our immune system is the main source of uh, disease. So it's, it gets confused and then attacks platelets and removes it from the circulation. So why it got confused, what happens really and all, till now we don't know the causes. But still, it's not idiopathic, it's of immune mediated disease. And one more thing, so most of the patients with ITP, they don't have purpuric patches or red spots on the skin. So even most of the ITP patients are asymptomatic. So they, do, they, they don't even know that the platelet counts are low. So they'll come to know only after doing a health checkup. So these patients have a platelet count usually of more than 30,000. So, because not every patient will have purpuric rash, the term has been removed from ITP. So, now it's simply called as immune thrombocytopenia. So, hope you have understood uh, the cause of low platelets uh, in these patients. So, next question. So, doctor, so why does platelet fluctuates in my ITP? So, I've been diagnosed with ITP, I'm on treatment, the platelet count always fluctuates and this creates a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of anxiety in my life. You know, I am worried that platelet count sometimes may drop suddenly, it can cause bleeding and it, it may cause life risk also. See, this is the second most concern uh, faced, uh, faced by these uh, patients. So, addressing this question, what you should understand is ITP is not a bad disease. So, life risk in ITP is a very, very rare event. So, not every patient with ITP will go through a life risk. It happens in a very, very few uh, patients. So when you compare ITP and other diseases, suppose the low platelet count. So in ITP, even the patients can have a 20,000, 10,000 and even 5,000, still they may not have bleeding symptoms. So why is this? So why because in ITP, so what happens in ITP? The platelets are produced normally. That means that marrow function is normal. So the, but the platelets are destroyed in the blood by the immune system. So to compensate this, marrow produces a lot of, lot of new platelets. All these new platelets are larger in size, and they are very active, much much more active than the normal mature platelets. So this is the reason, even though the patient have very low platelets, the platelets which are there will function, have, will have a very good function so in uh, clotting the blood. So that's why even though ITP patients can have very low platelet count, but they still, they may not bleed excessively. So remember this. Even low platelet counts, less than 30,000 may not result in life-threatening bleeding. But still, there is a possibility of a major bleed in some set of patients. That's why we always treat patients who have platelet count less than 30,000. So now why does the platelet count fluctuates a lot in these patients on treatment or so off treatment? So first you should understand how the platelets are measured in a lab. 
so whenever you give a blood sample the sample goes through a machine and the machine counts the platelets so by their size in idp what happens as i told you there are a lot of destruction of the platelets and a lot of production of new platelets and these new platelets are larger in size so when the platelet is larger usually it goes beyond uh, four or five microns so sometimes it can have eight microns in uh, size so then the machine stops counting these platelets so now what will happen so already the platelet counts are low and few are big and few are normal in size all those large platelets are barred from counting they are not counted at all so now there is a fastly low count given by the machine okay so now this is the problem so everywhere so go to any lab each lab gives a different result the range between there will be a difference of at least 20 to 30 thousand in each lab to lab so why because if it's given only by machine obviously there will be a difference in the platelet count so ideally so once the machine gives a reading of platelet count it should be cross checked by a pathologist he is a lab doctor he sees the blood under the microscope and he counts the platelet manually and then gives the actual platelet count so in itp patients you should always uh, know about your manual platelet count not the machine count so understand if the blood sample is run in a machine in a different labs you will get different readings each time so 20 to 30 thousand fluctuation happens in a, uh, when when you get a uh, blood testing and also one more thing so whenever you are on treatment so it takes time for your platelet count to stabilize so till then your platelet count usually goes high and down high and down and always so this creates a lot of emotional uh, uh, disturbances to the patients you know they are worried that why the treatment is not responding why my platelets are fluctuating continuously so what you should understand is itp each patient behaves in a different manner it's the disease may be the same but each patient respond differently so for each patient the drugs used are different the drugs which works are different and the time taken by the drug to act is different so usually it takes at least 3 months time for your platelet count to stabilize so be patient enough and follow your doctor instructions stay on close follow up so till your platelet counts stabilizes even after stabilization minor fluctuations are um, so common in itp patients but so not to panic if till your platelet count is more than 50000 so at least 30000 so if your platelet count is more than 30000 so not to panic at all because it's a safe count and you can almost lead normal lifestyle with a platelet count of more than 30000 except in few situations the next common question uh, which patients have in their mind is uh, doctor will uh, this itp going to transform into some other disease which is more dangerous like say blood cancer so what you should understand is itp is a benign disease meaning non cancerous disease it's not a malignancy it's not a blood cancer so neither is going to become a blood cancer later usually it stays as an itp and remains as an itp and usually most of in adults this itp is a chronic disease so which is going to stay for a long time and you know many years situation sometimes the patient can have certain genetic mutations in them so those patients can become uh, can uh, transform to uh, leukemia later but usually itp is a non cancerous disease and usually doesn't become into a malignancy or a blood cancer many patients are can have a concern that whether uh, this disease is going to get transmitted to their children so this is a real worry in uh, many patients so this is uh, itp is not a uh, genetic disease meaning there are many blood disorders blood cancers mds mpn like there are many disorders uh, which have a uh, mistake or a mutation in a genes uh, uh, related to uh, hemopoietic elements so because it's not a genetic disease it's not transmitted to future generations so no need to worry about that your kids are not going to develop itp because you have uh, itp so next question which patients ask us routinely is doctor how long this this disease is going to be with me so i'm tired of uh, having this disease so is there a chance of cure or is this this is going to leave me completely at some point of time so this is the next common question which we uh, 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 face in uh, day to day practice so here so itp in adults usually is a chronic disease so suppose say 10 patients uh, 10 adult patients they get itp 
Among these 10 patients, 6 to 7 of them will develop a chronic disease. What does chronic disease mean? So, which is a long term disease. So, you can compare it to a hypertension or uh, diabetes, that kind of disease. It usually becomes a long term disease. So, ITP is not a dangerous disease, you know. So, but most often patients are worried about their counts and they don't have idea that what level of platelet count is safe. So, once you have platelet count of more than 30,000, stay calm and relax that you are in a safer zone, except in a fewer situations. So most often in children, they have spontaneous remissions. That would mean to say that, uh, so if they suppose say 10 kids have ITP, almost eight of them will get cured during the process. So few kids will get cured after three months, few kids in six months, few one year, two years. So most of the kids so will get cured during the treatment uh, process. Whereas in adults, it's reverse. So most of the adults, they develop a chronic uh, disease. The other question is doctor, uh, so my doctor is recommending splenectomy, should I go for it or not? In immune thrombocytopenia, so the immune system attacks the platelets and takes it to spleen and the platelets are cleared in the spleen. If you remove the spleen, okay, so if you remove the spleen, so obviously the platelets are going to stay in the circulation and uh, you know the platelets count usually, they become normal. So this is the idea behind uh, splenectomy. So, but splenectomy is it advisable? So, what you should understand is spleen is not a vestigial organ. Vestigial in the sense, it's not a waste organ in our body. Like an appendix, even if you remove your appendix, nothing is going to happen to you. But spleen has a very important functions. The most important function it does to us is providing a immune immunity. So, it gives us an immune function. So, which immune function in the sense it protects us from a certain very bad uh, microbes or bacteria, and also it has a property of purification of uh, blood so these two are very important functions of spleen so once splenectomy is done you're going to lose these two functions that's why splenectomy, once splenectomy is planned these patients should receive certain vaccinations against some few uh, bacteria like meningococcal streptococcal bacteria hemophilus influenza so these vaccinations so will uh, protect them from this bad infection and also uh, after removal of spleen uh, patients are prone for uh, slightly higher clotting risk when compared to normal population so because of the high risk of infections splenectomy is not done in children less than five years age if suppose say more than five years age if patients are not responding to multiple treatment options and uh, depending on certain indications certain situations splenectomy can be offered as a treatment in these patients but not as a first line so earlier days when the patient used to fail steroids they used to undergo splenectomy but nowadays we have a lot of multiple options like say thrombopoietin agonists and we can use combination drugs thereby postponing splenectomy. So now I'm going to conclude the talk here. So if you have ITP, so do not panic. So ITP is not a bad disease. So only you need little bit uh, understanding uh, how the disease behaves and how what are the targets which we should achieve in ITP and uh, always remember that having a platelet count more than 30,000 is safe and you can lead a normal lifestyle except in a uh, few situations. And, uh, and don't worry about platelet fluctuations. Usually it takes time for your platelet count to stabilize. Till then you should have patience. And we need to change uh, two, three drugs at least in few cases to achieve the uh, stable platelet count. With the available latest options and uh, combining different uh, mechanisms of action, uh, drugs with different mechanisms of action, we can, uh, uh, we can treat even uh, difficult cases of ITP. Uh, I hope that this information is useful to all. Uh, if you have liked the video, please share it to the patients with uh, ITP so, so that they can uh, so benefit a little bit uh, from the information given here. So if you still have queries and questions and if you need a, uh, ex more explanation on certain, top, certain points in ITP, please uh, uh, post them in the comment section. I will uh, try to make a video on it and uh, uh, post it later.